In the early hours of February 2, 2022, the oil production ship Trinity Spirit exploded and caught fire off the coast of Nigeria. Out of the 10 crew members who were on board at the time, three were confirmed to have died, while three others were rescued and four remain missing. Yeah, you can increase the pressure. The Trinity Spirit is an FPSO, or Floating Production, Storage, and Offloading Vessel. It had the capacity to store about 2 million barrels of oil and can process up to 22,000 barrels per day, and is owned by Shiba Exploration and Production Company Limited, or SEPCO, which is then owned by a combination of Nigerian and overseas corporate entities. The Trinity Spirit was a tanker ship built in 1976. It was later converted into an FPSO and was stationed in Wari, Nigeria, where it operated for more than 30 years. But according to sources, in recent years, the ship had too many technical issues and aside from being very old, it was also badly maintained. Environmentalists have also mentioned that it had already outlived its lifespan of 20 years and should have already been decommissioned and was not supposed to carry any oil. Which is mainly the reason why most, if not all, of the big trading companies stopped using it years ago. At present, the fire has already been extinguished, and the burnt-out wreckage of the Trinity Spirit lies broken in two and partially submerged. It is still not clear, however, as to how much crude oil might have spilled into the sea, but it is worth noting that the Trinity Spirit was not producing oil at the time of the blast, as the consortium running the oil field, including SEPCO, lost its production license in 2019. Also, Nigeria's environment minister said the vessel had been storing only around 50 to 60,000 barrels of crude oil, which is well below its capacity of 2 million barrels. According to the Niger Delta Good Governance and Environmental Initiative, the tide moves onshore and go offshore very fast in the area, and that high tidal waves could have washed away the oil and that full impact could be felt soon. I know a lot of you have questions and I think of them would be, what exactly is a floating production, storage, and offloading vessel? or FPSO. Well, simply put, it is a floating facility used by the offshore oil and gas industry for the production and processing of hydrocarbons and storage of oil. It is usually an oil tanker which has been converted and equipped with hydrocarbon processing equipment for separation and treatment of crude oil, water, and gases arriving on board from subsea oil wells through flexible pipelines. Now, some of you might be saying, Hey Chief, why are you talking about tankers and FPSO? You work on bulk carrier ships, right? <laughs> if that crossed your mind, then that just means you haven't watched most of my videos. Otherwise, you would already know that during the first 12 years of my career, almost all of my ships were tankers. I've been on board VLCC, product tankers, chemical tankers, oil chem. Actually, on my first contract as chief engineer, I was assigned to a storage tanker in Lagos, Nigeria. I only transferred to bulk carriers around nine years ago. So for those of you who are quite new to my channel, I have more than a hundred videos, which hopefully you'd find time to watch. Anyway, the FPSO concept allowed companies to produce oil in more remote areas and in deeper water than would have been economically possible with other methods. And it has storage capacity for the treated crude oil 
as well as an offloading system to transfer the oil to shuttle tankers, rather than requiring a pipeline to transport oil to shore. Now, since they handle combustible substances, obviously the standards of safety should be very high in these type of facilities. So, what could be the reason for the explosion? Now, tanker ships don't explode. Okay, well, under normal circumstances. And the system that prevents these explosions is the inert gas system. We all know that there are three components needed in order for fire to occur. These are fuel, heat, and oxygen. Take away one of those, and you won't have fire. Now, inside a cargo tank that contains oil, obviously we have fuel. And since fuel tanks are not really filled to the brim, there is always an empty space especially when the oil is being transferred, which means there's air, and since that air was at some point exposed to the atmosphere, it contains oxygen. So we have fuel and oxygen inside the tank. That's two out of three. Now if for some reason heat becomes present, heat can be generated by friction, or it could even be just a spark from metals, or even static electricity. So there is a possibility that it can become present anytime. The inert gas system's function is to reduce the probability of combustion by removing oxygen, or more accurately, reducing its percentage by diluting the tank's atmosphere with inert gas and bring it out of the explosive range. The inert gas is basically exhaust gas coming from the furnace of a boiler or from the inert gas generator. It passes through a scrubber to clear out any solid particles and other byproducts of combustion before being delivered into the cargo tanks. Usually, the cargo tanks are inerted to maintain an oxygen level of below 8% in order to suppress combustion. Anyway, Incidents such as what happened to the Trinity Spirit are needless to say very tragic as there was loss of human life as well as the potential for significant damage to the environment. There are already a lot of regulations and procedures in place which, if implemented properly, will prevent these things from happening. Which is a sad thing really because majority of the people and the companies in this industry are religiously implementing these procedures. It is the actions of a few, taking shortcuts, ignoring the rules, or outright breaking them with seeming impunity, which eventually causes disasters like these to happen.